Jan Rafa Hearn was 21 when in 1942 she was captured by the Japanese and forced into a military brothel. It was an experience she kept hidden for 50 years until she launched into a journey of truth and healing late in life. The first time I saw a Japanese soldier was uh, when a truck with Japanese military arrived in Bandungan and we had to all register. Then after that, the next thing was that we were rounded up and all put in prison camps. I'd been in a camp two years. Well, we'd been in prison camp for three and a half years. We often had uh, inspections in our camp. So one day, uh, one of these trucks arrived again and we thought, ah, oh, yeah, another inspection. But only the young girls from 17 years up to about 28 had to line up in the compound until in the end there was only 10 girls left standing and I was one of the 10. And then the truck pulled up in front of a large Dutch colonial house and they told us that we were in this house for the sexual pleasure of the Japanese military. In other words, we found ourselves in a brothel. And the horror of the opening night of the brothel has tortured my mind all my life. And, you know, our whole world just collapsed from under our feet. And we started protesting straight away. We said uh, that we were forced into this, you know, that, that they couldn't do this to us. You know, I had no right to do this. It was against the Geneva Convention. And um, uh, that we would never, never do this. But they just laughed at us, you know, just laughed. I mean, they said they could do with us what they liked threw me on the bed, he got hold of me, threw me on the bed and just tore off all my clothes and just brutally raped me. And um, I thought he would never stop. It, it, it was the most, it was the most horrendous. I never thought suffering could be that terrible. Within one night, we lost our youth. We lost our innocent, our youth. We were just such a, such a pitiful little group of girls. The fear, the fear. I, I, I'll never forget that fear. You know, it runs right through your body like electrical current. And it's a fear that has never left me. It's been with me all my life. I can feel that fear sometimes at night when I just sit here in my lounge room, look out through the window, and it's getting dark. Because when it's getting dark, it means I'm going to be raped over and over again. And even now, when I see it getting dark at night, I can still feel that fear coming over me, you know? It, it's, it's never really left me. This, this brothel you were in was run by a woman, wasn't it? Well, we thought when, we, when a woman arrived on the scene, we thought well, a woman will understand, you know? We were so glad of a woman. But the war had turned her into a hard person. She had no pity on us whatsoever. She... At the end of this ordeal... You have another, really. You, you're taken back to camps. You're reunited with your mother. Yes, reunited with my mother. And um, I had to tell her the story. After 50 years... Every comfort woman kept quiet. After 50 years, bang, all of a sudden, the time was right uh, to speak out. Yet a document recently discovered in Holland clearly shows that the Japanese special naval police called Tokei Tai kidnapped many women by force on the streets of Java, Indonesia in 1943 to supply women to comfort stations.
1998, the UN adopted a special report called the McDougald Report. The report revealed clearly that the comfort women were victims of a systematic rape and sexual slaves. In some way, uh, through the work that I had done, um, the international community had taken note of what had happened to them and that it, uh, they were true atrocities. They were moved uh, along with the military units when the military units had to move to different fronts. Uh, they moved in military ships, uh, equipments, uh, trucks, etc. It was a part of the Japanese Army military uh, field operation. And I think very importantly to uh, change uh, the school books, the history books used in Japanese schools uh, so that they accurately reflect uh, what happened. Yon has continued her campaign and she's also received an Order of Australia and um, a P Anzac Peace Prize. She's had a knighthood from the Dutch government. In Tokyo, in 1992, there was an international forum on uh, Japanese war crimes. And they wanted witnesses to speak at this forum. And I was the first European woman to speak out. Even after almost 50 years, I still experience this feeling of total fear going through my body and through all my limbs, burning me up. It was my deep faith in God that helped me survive all that I suffered. You went to Washington. Did that take you by surprise? I was invited to speak at a congressional meeting in Washington. That was the pinnacle of it all. And in my old age, I can still pull it off. <laughs> I have forgiven the Japanese for what they did to me, but I can never forget. What was so amazing about the Washington event, for the first time, a government found it important enough to take up the issue of the comfort women and ask Japan to officially apologize. This had never happened before. This was mine and nobody, nobody... I was just so excited and I just thought, I've got to do this and I've got to do it right. Time is running out for these comfort women. They're all getting old. They are like my heart and my soul, you know. We suffered this together. We went through this together. I will do anything for them.